Who do you want to take next, Mr. Give Russell? Give me line two. Line two, magic. Uh, this is not the other Theus caller. Uh, Gary in Houston is probably going to be the last caller of the day because we uh, so rudely hung up on him before. <laughs> uh, Gary, can hello. you hear me? Yes. yes. Hey, Russell and so, Don. Sorry we had some phone trouble earlier. Yeah, um, but I'm glad we finally connected. Um, my name's Gary Brown. I'm an atheist. Mm -hmm. I'm also an IRS employee. And I wanted to ask you if you're familiar with an organization called Christian Fundamentalist Internal Revenue Employees. That sounds nope. creepy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does to me, too. Um, it is a... So you have some church-state separation Pardon concerns? Me? You have some church-state separation concerns about this group? Well, I certainly do. Um, uh -huh. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit about them okay, and please. see what your thoughts are. All right. Uh, bear in mind that we have about three minutes left. So uh, uh, if you need yep. more time after the show, we can talk to you after there then, too. But if you can hurry it up a little. Okay, it might. Uh, this is probably a lengthy conversation, but I guess the nutshell version is this is a 501c3 and a separate legal organization hmm. which is partially funded by the IRS with respect to some of its activities. Uh, there are other in IRS employee organizations like there's one for Muslims, there's one for uh, military veterans, there's one for Hispanics. There's one for Asians. So it, it has a, a value and a benefit to the employees. But, of course, if you're concerned about separation of church and state like I am, uh, Steve Fire is a little... Well, I, th I, think, I think the main question here is, is are, they, are they favoring some religions over others or some religions over irreligion? And if so, then there's a problem. But if they're, if they're you know, making you know, these clubs or groups and, and funding and doing them, treating them all the same, yeah, if they're then, like then there's not an issue. Yeah, if they're providing a general pool of funds for people to start their subgroups, maybe that's okay. Yeah, yeah they're, um, they're treating all these organizations the same in the way in which they partially fund them. So if I knew of other IRS employees interested in starting an organization for atheists, um, I'd be happy to start networking to do so. Oh yeah, I think you should go for it. Uh, I, I mean, sometimes these organizations are illegal and ought to be shut down, but sometimes they're taking advantage of completely legit uh, means, means of getting groups started, in which case we should take advantage of those too, absolutely. Yeah. And I believe that DFAR is a legitimate organization, and the IRS certainly has the uh, legal wherewithal to be partially funding their yeah, their These same so. sorts of questions come up with uh, like school groups in public schools. Um, uh -huh. You know, you, you can have religious school groups, but you also have to, you know, if, if there's a student that wants that, you know, be able to create a secular student group or an atheist student group. And, and when they prohibit that, that's when, that's when they cross the line. Uh, and sometimes they do. Sometimes there are, there are school districts that, that, that put roadblocks up for those sorts of clubs. Um, so, anyway, I think we're running out of time, Mr. Russell. All right. <laughs> so I hope uh, we addressed your question. Yeah, thanks very much. Perhaps uh, I'll run into people that are like-minded and uh, yeah, we can go for it. to accomplish. All right. Good luck yep. to you. Thank, Thank you. you.